All right, so we want to talk about speed and velocity from graphs. So graph i, and I'm going to have some of the formal parts of a graph here, but it's obviously not going to be totally formal. So I want to keep it small. Graph i is going to have its x and its y axis. I mean, we're not going to call it x and y anymore. We're just going to call it the vertical and horizontal because we're not going to use x's and y's as our variables. We're going to use position and time. So the lowercase d with an arrow in meters and lowercase t for seconds. And one thing that you should always have when you're having a position or when you're drawing a position time graph or a velocity time time graph or any graph where one of the axes represents a vector you should indicate that the positive direction is a particular direction, okay? So we're going to indicate that the positive direction in this case is north. Only label the positive direction, in this case north. It's uh, D with an arrow over top, I'll show you. D with an arrow over top, M in brackets, and the positive direction in square brackets. Okay. So bringing it back around, it's kind of the nice thing about having it on paper. I can rotate it. I can never rotate a blackboard. So we've got position and time axes. And on the vertical axis, I'm going to write increments of 100. So 100, 200, 300, 400. Okay. And on the horizontal axis, I want to go out to 200 in increments of 50 seconds. Okay, so all the way out to 200 seconds. I'd like to draw a graph where I start at a position 100 meters north of the origin. So that would be right here. I'm going to start at a position 100 meters north of the origin. I'll draw it in, or in orange. Okay, 100 meters north of the origin. And I want to end up at a position that's 400 meters north of the origin after only 200 seconds. Okay, and so I get a graph that looks something like this. There's only so many things we can do in terms of analysis for a graph as simple as this one. We th I think we can all agree that this is a fairly simple graph. I want to highlight the fact that it ends abruptly at 200 seconds with a vertical dotted line. The simplest, I think, the, f the simplest analysis I can do on a graph like this is to find its slope. So I want to find the slope of this position time graph. Slope of a position time graph, well, how do you find the slope of any graph? R and R, what is it? Rise over run. Beauty. Okay, so we've got rise over run. And for a position time graph, really the rise is your delta D value, and your run is from start to finish your delta T value. The rise isn't from here to here, the rise is from here to here. Okay, rise over run, delta D over delta T. And we know that delta D over delta T from previous discussion, I should put an arrow over top, is the average velocity. V av. Can your plug please come out? Thank you. All right, so I want to express it again a little bit nicer. V average is equal to delta D over delta T, or if we want to really expand it out, D2 minus D1 all over, oops, not D, T, oh, I wish I had some white out now, T2 minus T1. Oops, there goes the textbook. Uh, and whenever we're defining points one and point two, we always read from left to right, okay? So this would be point one, and this would be point two going from left to right. So position two in this case, as I'm subbing in my values, would be 400 meters. 
Position 1 would be 100 meters. T2 is 200 seconds. And T1 is 0 seconds. And so this is actually not a whole lot of difficult math. We could do this as head math. 400 minus 100 is 300. But I'll write it out anyway. 300 meters divided by 200 seconds. And we end up getting 1.50. And we're going to consider all of these digits to be significant. So 1.50, three significant digits, meters per second. We can figure out what our velocity is. Now, it's a positive value. And I haven't written the positive sign. But since it's a positive value, what does that tell you about the direction based on our earlier frame of reference? Yeah? The whatever we're graphing is going north. Yeah. Whatever the object happens to be is traveling northerly. OK. Now, this was graph i. I want to produce what I want to call i, i, i. OK? i, i, i. And I'm going to be strategic about how I put it down. I want to put i, i, i underneath of i, like directly below. OK? So I'm being very intentional about this. I want to make my vertical axis lie directly underneath. And if you've already drawn your page in a way that won't allow you to do this, that's OK. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. And maybe next time, you know, with a little bit of background knowledge, you'll set your page up so that you'll be able to do this too. How would you know, right? So I'm going to put them directly above and below one another. And this way, I can use the same time axis. I can, you know, what I would call just map the time axis down so that my 200, my 150, my 100, and my 50 are all lined up with one another. I still have to relabel them again. But they're lined up. And I can map one graph onto another fairly easily this way. Uh, i got to redraw my vertical axis, though, not as dt now, but as a velocity, vt graph. I want to make this a, a v for the vertical axis in meters per second. And I'm still going to choose the positive axis to be north. So if that looks like a lot of gobbledygook written sideways, I'll turn it for you so you can see. Velocity in meters per second to the north is going to be that vertical axis. OK. So back again. I'm going to, well, I'm going to put a fairly short axis on this vertical axis. I'm going to make it be 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2 meters per second. Because I'd like this velocity time graph to be the velocity time graph that matches with the position time graph above it. So I've got to ask you really quickly, does the velocity between point 0.1 and point 0.2 on graph I change? In other words, does the slope change? If slope is, is the velocity on a position time graph, then what can you tell me about the velocity then? Yeah? It's, constant. it's a constant. I really like the language too. It's a constant velocity. Okay? So I'm even going to label this. Constant velocity. Some people will even call it uniform motion. Uniform motion. It means that it's not accelerating. Uniform motion. It's constant velocity. So what is the constant velocity for this second graph? For the whole first 200 seconds? What's the numerical value? Yeah? 1.5 yeah, meters per second. The whole darn thing, 1.5 meters per second. I'm going to draw my little dotted line up. But the whole darn thing, 1.5 meters per second, the whole time. OK? Simplest little graph you could ever imagine. 1.5 meters per second for 200 seconds. Now, I want to be able to look at these graphs, and I'd like to be able to work backwards sometimes. So let's say I'm given this graph here, and I'd like to get, I mean, obviously, when you plot a graph, you often start off with a, a table of values. You know, you do this in earlier grades. You have like a table of values, and it's like a t-chart, and you put down all your d's and your t's and all that sort of stuff. And then you'll produce a graph like this. But I'd like to go from these graphs backwards to some of those values. So I want to start, I'll do it down here, I'll call it section IV, I want to find displacement. Let's, let's uh, talk about finding displacement 
from graphs. And first I want to talk about finding displacement oops not from graph I. I think the easiest one of the two. Displacement, finding displacement for this journey for graph from graph I would just be delta D equals D2 minus D1. And we actually kind of already did it up here, embedded within that average velocity calculation a second ago. So we could find our delta D value, our displacement, by just saying, okay, delta D, or okay, delta D is D2 minus D1. D2 is 400 meters. D1 is 100 meters. And I end up getting positive 300 meters. Does that look right? I moved 300 meters in the positive direction or 300 meters north? It's not like we're blowing anybody's mind here. I want to try and do it now from graph I, I, I. Okay, From graph I, 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 even if I never even showed you graph I, I could find displacement by looking at graph I, 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 and I could do it fairly easily with this little rule. The rule is this. Area under a VT is displacement. And I want to show you what I mean by that, and then later on I'll show you again, okay? Because I want this to really stick. How could I find the area under that orange graph in IIEI. What geometric shape is that graph? It's a rectangle, right? I see. I saw a few people mouth the words. So I could say, look, area is really length times height. People say length times width, however you want to say it. Length times height, though, that's a nice way to talk about this rectangle. And the length is in seconds, delta t. And the height it's really the average velocity. Now the average velocity doesn't change in this case. It's constant, but let's just call it the average velocity. And so if I want to find the area, length times average velocity, I would say, okay, delta t, that's uh, 200 seconds. I'm off the page here. 200 seconds. V average is 1.5 meters per second. 200 times 1.5. I'm going to do some bad math for him, and I'm going to put my equal sign beside. What's 200 times 1.5? Yeah, 300. Holy moly, Bob's your uncle. Same answer as we got with graph I, OK? It's still positive 300 meters. Now, the thing that might not be obvious, but I, I hope that you see what I'm talking about here, is if I say V average is equal to delta D, over delta t, that was something we defined once before. If I rearrange that to get delta d all by itself, I'll get delta d equals delta t times v average. So I hope you can see, just by comparing what I have here with what I wrote here, can you see that those guys are the same thing? That, that equation and this sort of uh, rule of thumb about finding areas underneath the vt graphs, are consistent with one another? Sort of works, right? So that, that's something that I want to keep in the back of our minds as we proceed.